hello. Uh, We're here cracking some packs. Real trap shit. <laughs> Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm your host, the Mighty Fugal. We're here today with our good friend, Chris. He actually bought a box of Double Masters, uh, which is one of the uh, newest master sets for Magic the Gathering. You get double the value, double the rares. Hopefully we crack something good. Really hoping for some good stuff today. So we're just going to crack some packs on camera, have at her, and uh, just have a good time. Yeah, I guess we'll get started. All right. Okay, so pack number one. Uh, by the way, we are going to save the box topper for the uh, last thing to crack. We just want to see what we get okay. uh, for the packs first and foremost. So, yeah. so team or battle? Oh, I need some good cards. Yeah, absolutely. Like, got some goodies there. Riddle Smith, that was a fun card. Drown and Sorrow. Oh. I remember when that was uh, first spoiled for. I believe it was Fate Reforged at the time. Mono Black was a big, uh, big competitive deck. Very but, nice. Uh, oh, will we? Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Okay. Okay. Well, sorry, Mr. Producer God. Man. It's like it's my first time. <laughs> okay, yeah. so show them the first rare. We've got Send Triplets. This is actually a really fun uh, general uh, for commander play. Uh, for the player, not the play group, but... <laughs> well, fun fun is a relative term. Um, you kind of really put your own definition on it. Um, you really do. Yeah, I mean, when you're an Esper, you're going to be wanting to build artifacts. Send triplets is just, well, it is fun for you. Not so much fun for everyone else. Very powerful commander. Oh, yeah. Um, what's the other rare you got there, bud? We got the Geist of Saint Trust. Ooh, man, I, this, this <sighs> card. I have a lot of fond memories of this card. Yeah, I am not surprised. It's just... It's a good body, it's got hex poof, and it makes you a nice swingy it, angel when it, it attacks. You no, know, for three mana, you're attacking for what, like six damage? Oh, uh, yeah. It, it's just mwah, so good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, what do we get for foils? Anything decent? Uh, not, really? not really. Not really. Not really. A couple yeah. commons, but eh. more, more draft chaff, but hey, foils are foils. Exactly. All exactly. right, so that's pack number one. Okay. Let's get into the second one here. Now, what card uh, are you looking for us to pull from this pack? Um, you know, I'm really hoping for some nice, uh, nice mana rocks. Oh, look at that! We got. I uh, want to put that on camera there. Oh, brainstorm. Um, put that uh, brainstorm. Yeah. Premier cantrip sees all kinds of eternal oh, play. Oh God, yeah. Brainstorm's brainstorm, but it's only as good as the shuffle effects you have. Which uh, expedition map? That card is a shuffle effect, but you definitely wouldn't see them in the same deck. Uh, expedition map is. Tron All Star. I mean, that's really where this card's getting a lot of value, and absolutely great in Commander when you're running a very valuable lands. I mean, Urborg and Cabal Coffers yeah. kind of come to mind. Yeah, like <laughs> reali realistically, any deck that isn't green would love Expedition Map in it. It's Let's get those utility lands just when you need them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, what else do we have? Ooh. So let's see. Oh, Ooh, babe. who I was hoping for. We got ourselves an Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. Uh, I remember when uh, they released the Commander product, they were doing four colors, or multiple colors, I think it was. Uh, this one was a pretty spicy number. Yeah, no. Uh, the four color decks, and this is the first time the partner mechanic was brought out. So mm -hmm. where CDH got its... Oh, so fun, Thrasios Timna build. <laughs> uh, partner is such an interesting mechanic. I was really happy to see it play. Just in a, a different way to build commander decks, for sure. Exactly. Um, anyways. And another amazing, amazing man. Noble Hierarch, one of the best mana dorks, I think, that has ever been printed, in it, my opinion. It is. It's one mana. Sure, it doesn't really have his, a power to it, but it has the three colors. And when you have something you want to swing with, it gets I him for can, good damage. Uh, I could think of a couple things. Uh, Glistener Elf certainly comes to mind. <laughs> 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 yeah, that would, yeah that would do it. Yeah, that would do it. Anyways. Okay, pack number three. Keep her going. Ooh, this is a very nice one. Masterwork, Masterwork of Ingenuity. Mm. I remember when that was printed. I believe it was the mono-colored Commander products. That, and that came in the mono-white Nahiri deck. Um, that was just a... It, interesting and unique clone effect. I mean, it's one mana. It can only copy equipment, but it's still it, it's a it's an extra copy of the best equipment you have. Exactly. Like um, imagine putting that down on a double striker with 
two swords of feast and famine. Oh, yeah, getting, getting four feasts and famine triggers. Getting extra swords if you run a few living weapons like Batter Skull. I mean, oh, yeah. that you've paid one mana for this like Bane Slayer Angel, pretty much. Um, exactly. Or even just copying a Lightning Greaves. That's that's fair too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, good old Geth. Geth, Lord of the Vaults. Um, such a crazy like that card can get out of hand, Commander. I've oh, I've yeah. seen it. I've seen it as both the general and also as a value piece. It it, it does some pretty fun things, and uh, most people don't realize he has intimidate. <laughs> yeah, like that's. I think that's just because that's a keyword that doesn't see as nearly as much play as it used to. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like when you look at Grave Titan, you, you don't realize that thing actually has Death Touch, but it's a six six. Why? Why would that matter? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's like it's just like with Gitgog. It's like people don't think about it because it's a big, beefy guy, mm -hmm. and most everything dies to it but it's those rare occasions okay now, going on to the rares we got good old thespian stage such a fun card not uh not quite a vesuva but usually just as good um sometimes maybe even better in certain cases yeah, i would say it is better just for the fact you get to reuse the effect Especially in uh, large commander pods where there's going to be people playing different lands. They're going to be taking a lot of different turns. Maybe they didn't have the one that you wanted as soon as you played Vesuva, you know? Exactly. Well, it's options. like send triplets. Just send triplets, which also pulled. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this one, I, I do like it, but it's uh, very interesting. Um, it sort of does, Sundering Titan, it does sort of break that, uh, what is it, the unofficial rule of commander don't touch the lands. I mean, isn't it isn't it still banned in Commander? Uh, is it banned in Commander? I believe it is. Um, I, I may... For good reason, it was yeah. uh, abused in a lot of strategies. It wasn't... Ex Sundering, Sundering Titan. Titan. I know Primeval Titan is banned. For very, again, for very good reason. <laughs> Please, Watsy, why do, you hate, why do you hate Titans that you print? Why are yeah. they so good? On to pack four... <laughs> Let's hope we pull a bob. <laughs> not with that artwork, though. Oh, is that not? I, that, that's not my favorite. I don't know. Uh, which would be your favorite? Oh, the original. Ah, true enough. Okay. The actual bob. <laughs> fair point, fair point. Ah, okay. <sighs> Shamanic Revelation? That was one of the rares we pulled. Um, I mean, it's, it's green card draw. It's not the most exciting, but it certainly has... It has a place. I don't know. I, I, I find... It has the thing that green's really missing, that life gain. Green, mono green decks, they take some hits, they can dish it out, but when they get a board wipe, they start taking hits. That's one of the biggest issues think I of find it, in um, Think of it this way, too. When you're playing powerful cards like Mana Crypt, Ancient Tomb, Sylvan Library, you know, exactly. you're using your life to lose your resource. So having some ways to recuperate and um, you know, restabilize is not the worst thing you could have. Exactly. I mean, that's one thing white has over all the other colors. <laughs> Absolutely. And Skurzdag High Priest. Um, mm. See, this was a fun card when it was uh, legal and standard. Uh, we saw that in the uh, Aristocrats decks because it was sacrificing creatures. Things were dying, so you were just able to make these 5-5 five, five demons that were just really hard to deal yeah. with. And you just... Such a, such a good deck. Well, Very hard to pile. Well, slight on. correction. Uh, it doesn't actually sacrifice creatures. You have to tap no, two um, creatures with it. But more but, what I meant is that uh, the actual yeah, namesake point. cards of the deck, such as Cartel Aristocrat or Falcon Wrath mm, Aristocrat, you had these sacrifice yeah, outlets... Creatures were dying, and then you have a 5-5. Five five. It's like, hey, what you going to do? Two enough, two mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, uh, look at that. Uh, mono braids. blue braids. This, uh, I've seen a few mono blue commander decks use her as the centerpiece and just do some absolutely busted things. Mostly cheating in a Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, that's the most common one by yep. far. Yep. Um, and then another powerful commander, Joy. Which I Wild believe Light you Captain. also have that as a... Uh, you have that one as a commander, Bill. Yes. Um, unless you have very fast turns and your play group is very patient, I do not recommend building her because it turns into solitaire very, very quickly. <laughs> but she does the best part of the game. Draw a lot draws of cards. Draws a card. She draws your cards. Okay, now. Ooh, a, a lovely bear. Dual cast a mage. Oh, uh, people went nuts when uh, this was first printed. In, in, yeah, that was also first printed in the monocolored commander decks. Oh, um, really? A lot of folks were thinking of ways it could, you know, provide a lot of value. Of course, a lot of folks thought, oh, it's going to see all the legacy play. And it didn't really. Yeah. But for being a reverberate on a body, 
Mm-hmm. It's good. And I believe it actually fits into budget decks as well. It like, does. It really is a bulk rare. Which it, is, it is relatively cheap. Yeah, I was honestly surprised when I first saw that, but um, a card that isn't as cheap, Basilisk Caller. Oh, man. I have seen, like, when this, uh, when this was in standard at, at the time, um, many folks were pairing it with another card called Cunning Spark Mage. He was just a pinger. He had haste. He would deal damage to something. Generally, you would get Stoneforge Mystic to fetch up the Basilisk Caller. Oh, yeah. Um, you'd have your Cunning Spark Mage, and you just start machine gunning their creatures down, which was fun, cute. A lot of decks wanted to slot it in. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, we have a Filter Land here. Mm-hmm. Uh, filter Lands are interesting. I mean, they don't actually, like, they'll tap for colorless. Uh, do they tap for colorless? Yes, they yeah. do. And uh, just put any mana into it and just get whatever uh, mana you need. Not any mana. It specifically has to be one of the two Sorry, colors. Sorry, I stand correct. <laughs> um, this one in particular, uh, and I believe the red-blue one, that they do see uh, some amounts of modern play. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of them actually haven't been reprinted. A few of them haven't been reprinted in quite a long time. No, or they ever. haven't. Out, outside of, say, the uh, expeditions they did for Battle for Zendikar block. Mm-hmm. And yeah. these are definitely needed reprints. Mm-hmm. Uh, those prices need to come down. I mean, and I would have loved fetch lands, but... Uh, <clears throat> I was Commander Legends. Commander Legends. <laughs> Let's hope. You know what? As Pleasant Kenobi says, we print fetch lands, you can We print fetch lands, absolutely. Yeah. And another amazing card. The s- oh, Scare of God. Oh. Funny enough, this is my third copy. Really? Um, one, I picked up some uh, cards from someone I worked with from Out of Devastation, Armageddon. Also came with uh, Bolus, the Bolus Planeswalker. Very nice. Very um, nice. This is my second normal copy, and then I did pick up that uh, invocation for mm. my eventual uh, pet deck. Oh, very cool! Very cool. Uh, when I have it somewhat done, I may actually show it up in the deck. Um, and for the one foil, Fulminator Mage. Uh, see, this is actually a really good one because it is uh, it's a really good sideboard card. Yeah, uh, it's a really good sideboard card for uh, a lot of decks, uh, especially mm-hmm. um, I know. Living in when that was still around, is it still around? I don't know. I haven't played modern in a little while. Um, you would you would run this uh, mainly against uh, Tron. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, this this gets rid of uh, card in the graveyard. Sorry. Uh, no, it blows up a non-basic land. Right, 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 right. Okay, my my mistake. Yes, you would run it against. Uh, you would run it against Tron. Uh, yeah, Tron, Gaius Cradle, any stupidly powerful non-basic land that you want to get rid of. Deals with the uh, deals with the problem. Okay, uh, skipping ahead a bit, I have to cut you off there. Uh, Ad nauseum. Ooh. Oh my, I am very, very happy to see this card. As soon as you see someone cast Ad nauseum, you know something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, they're either going to win <laughs> or they're going to die. Gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> and another amazing... Uh, Council's yeah. Judgment. This is just really great white removal. Mm-hmm. He's legacy play. He's all kinds of commander play, especially in large pods. It can get pretty stupid. Yeah, like at like even on power four. Like if everyone picks something, that's four threats gone from the board. Yeah. One of them might be yours, but it might be worth the risk. Well, it actually can't be yours because you can't target something that you control. That is very mm-hmm. true. So it could easily get rid of four big threats. Absolutely. Okay. But yeah. So, Pyawall Shaman, uh, for those who don't Just know... put it on the... Uh, yeah. It is a very good aggro card. It's um, repeatable pumping. Not just that. Blood Rush was a very strong mechanic in Limited because you could have these bodies or potential combat tricks. So, it always gave the red and green decks something to do and, and just use their mana very efficiently mm-hmm. and just make combat a nightmare for other players. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going what? into the rares. All right. First off, uh, an amazing board wipe with engineered explosives. This card sees all manner of play mm-hmm. in like constructed formats where it's legal. Um, I mean, it can just deal with a lot of different things, and that's usually why. Um, that's actually why, in uh, I believe it was Legacy, the blue. The blue white stone blade decks would actually spl- like splash red. They just have lands attack for red, or any other color. Just to get that extra effect out of oh, yeah. explosives. Oh, yeah. And I have a question for you. Sure. What is a four-mana spell in white that everyone wants? 
Hmm. Does it have two white in its mana cost? Yes, sir. Is it a sorcery? Yes, sir. Are we talking about a good old Wrath of God? Good old Wrath of God. Good old Wrath of God. Uh, that is a card that it cannot see enough reprintings. It's consistently stayed up, and it it really should be lower. All I got to say is Sweeper's going to sweep. Am I right? Exactly. But who knows? Maybe with uh, Shattered Sky uh, giving you a possible upside, it might drop in price a bit. Uh, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, for uh, foils again, nothing overly so special. We, but uh, ooh. I was very much looking forward to pulling this. Not even the card, just the token. Merit Lay. Even just having reprints of the token, because before this was a really, really hard token to get a hold of. This was like just seriously, not a, not a card you cast, a token mm-hmm. that cost a lot of money. Because it was that rare, and I think it was also in foil, too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, my friend, uh, I pulled a, from Ultimate Masses, I pulled the name of the card, which we were just talking about, which is spacing. I am completely spacing on. Mail, uh, Dark Depths? Dark Depths. That yeah. was it. I pulled a copy. I didn't get the token. And then my one friend, Sam, uh, pulled the foil token I have yet to get from her. <laughs> and now, um, the card that the uh, popper players have been calling for a reprint yes. for a very long time. Yes, show me. Yet. Oh. And as of right now, it's, it's getting up there in price. One of the main reasons this card did not see a reprint for quite some time. If you looked at the original card, you looked at that box of text, like they just, Wizards didn't know. It's like, how are we going to reprint this? They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. So now that, you know, we're seeing cards that utilize phasing, which itself is a bit of a weird mechanic. Mm -hmm. The fact that they just reworded to have phasing, it, Still a little bit complicated, but let me tell you, that text box is a lot more digestible than its original print. Yeah, I actually, um, shout out to the professor for talking about it so much, otherwise you wouldn't know this card exists, but I, I read the card on his channel, and it was honestly um, the most confusing card I've ever seen, and I have a copy of, I think is Balduvian Shaman, the one that... Oh. Goodness. Rewrites enchantments. <laughs> yeah, that's um, uh, mm. now uh, an amazing card for any deck with green. Uh, Awakening Zone. You tend to see this more in token-based strategies. Mm-hmm. I know one of the main ones when I first started playing Commander was uh, Rise of Redeemed, oh, yeah. just because it was an effect that would always be making tokens. Whether or not you're going to use it for the mana, it's making these bodies. You know, exactly. relevant. Now, um, the Maze of Ith. Another amazing utility land I pulled. Wow. But, um, something I have noticed in recent years, uh, like with Labyrinth of Scophus, I believe, mm-hmm. from um, Theos Beyond Death, uh, we are seeing the same effect a lot more often, but mm-hmm. the lands also tap for mana. And before that, I believe it was back in M11, and it saw, I think, a few reprints and supplemental products was uh, Mystifying Maze. Mm-hmm. Um, that one didn't remove the creature from combat. It would tap for colorless. You tap four to activate it, and it would actually just uh, it would exile the creature. Exactly, exactly. And it's like that's something that... But the creature came back, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's something a lot of um, people have been calling for a reprint for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully, we'll be seeing the uh, cost go down for Absolutely. the budget players out there. Absolutely. Uh, okay, um... See, Pure Steel Paladin. Now, this was uh, <clears throat> this is still a very interesting card. Um, I remember when it was first printed. I always thought like this seems great, but the problem is it gets it it got just outperformed by another two uh, two mana white uh, creature, which was uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Mm-hmm. So which you know, we shall see if we uh, pull one of those. We today. shall see. But to go along but with it that, it draws a card exactly. But I think one of the biggest things um especially for anyone who wants a sir gwyn deck mm-hmm. metalcraft equipment you control has equipped zero as long as you control three or more artifacts which is usually relatively easy to, to do exactly and it's just uh, another way for a sir gwyn deck to bounce around all those equipments mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. they really want to do that with yeah now. 
And what's the next rare we got? Another there? amazing card, Champion of Lambo. That's just a fun card. Yeah. Gets bigger. Yeah. Becomes um, unblockable. Yeah. That's Exceedingly good. broken in the Jilla. Oh, absolutely. Is it also a warrior? It is a human warrior. It is a warrior. Um, and also the thing with keep in mind with it, it's all creatures you control, not just champion. Ooh, that yeah. is that's really good. It that's is really good. a very, very powerful card. Absolutely. Okay, now, um, on to the rares. Salvage Titan. Not the most exciting, but certainly an interesting card. Yeah, I mean, being able to sacrifice three artifacts instead of paying six mana, um, mm -hmm. I can definitely see that really being helpful in a lot of decks. No, no, for sure. Um, even, like, in Limited, that's an excellent bomb. And if you have, a, like, a lot of enablers, for example, if you, um, one of the cards you pulled there, your mm -hmm. Mirror Smith, you know, you're making these these bodies that are also happen to be artifacts at very little investment and being able to hang on to those and just sacrifice them for mm -hmm. this big beefy bomb to attack with is, well, uh, is quite relevant. Exactly. And um, especially pa when paired with a card like Marionette Master. Ooh. That is, that would just That's kill, a fun card. That, that would just kill a table very quickly. Absolutely. Now, um, as for the next rare, we got Duplicant. This is so good in Commander. I mean, mm -hmm. it's essentially... It's colorless removal, if you think about it, mm -hmm. while also providing a, uh, a relevant body afterwards. And it's a repeatable enter the battlefield effect if you have ways to bounce it back to your hand mm -hmm. or flicker effects, you name it. There's a lot of different decks that this card goes into. Exactly. And I think one of the biggest things with Duplicant is that it does exile its target. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that would have me run it over um, Media Golem. Yeah, and I mean, if you can't get your hands on a duplicate, which there wasn't many reprintings of it. Um, the most recent reprint would have been in the Sahili uh, Planeswalker deck, I believe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but it is just a good all-around card. Going on to the rares, Wooded Bastion. I believe that's your second filter land you pulled. That it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I believe the Wooded Bastion is one of the ones that has never seen a reprint, so this is mm. definitely much needed. Absolutely. And speaking of this... Well, would you look at that? Yeah, uh, he is. This is my second copy. Very fun commander. Yep. You can, uh, it can be really powerful. It can be really budget friendly. It's just, it's one of the best commanders to build around if you're just getting into the format. In my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. No, like um, green is the easiest color for beginners. Absolutely, because you get the ramp, you get everything you want to do with commander, and you have so many options. Like if you want a artifact deck, there's a green commander for that if you want a tribal if you want a big timmy stompy deck you just want to play all the big monsters like there's it's so flexible like green is absolutely one of my favorite colors except for red don't at me talk about commander cards deep Glo glow skate oh wow yeah um i do know my friend sam who i mentioned uh Shout out to Sam. Um, she has her Sahili deck uh, and Deep Glow Skate with Sahili and Mycosynth Lattice. Ah, uh, oh, Mycosynth Lattice. Yep. One of my favorite cards. Yeah, I know. Um, but those three cards just make as many Sahilis as you want, keep alting as much as you want until you're just ready to kill everyone. And I mean, just any any type of plus one plus one counters loyalty counters you name it like it's it's very popular in commander a lot of people love these cards they're very powerful you know they represent characters and the uh, story and the multiverse that people really you know really enjoy so it's mm. it's no secret that deep Lost gate would be a very popular card oh yeah now, um and i i'm very unsure if this is a reprint um or when it was reprinted from because no it was in the wind grace deck but death Reap ritual just a Good card, Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. They're all reprints. No, I wouldn't have guessed. But what I mean, I don't know if it was uh, new to the Wind Grace deck or because that's where I first well, saw it. Let me see this one. I believe this would have, I think it was printed back in uh, either the first or second Conspiracy set uh. because they did they did reprint some cards in there and did uh, bring back a few returning mechanics. I believe Morbid was one of them, so okay. I think it's where it was first printed. <laughs> now, going on to the rares, uh, Open the Vaults. Um, just a very good card. 
Uh, there's certainly some ways I've seen it uh, abused just to sacrifice all these things, get them right back. A um, couple of, I don't think quite infinite, but just ways to get like a lot of uh, a lot of value within mm-hmm. those colors. It certainly requires to be uh, built around to get best uh, and the most effective use out of it, but yeah, um, it's fun. Yeah, one list. Uh, it was a Zedru deck list. Um, essentially, the whole idea was putting all these stupidly powerful enchantments in the bin. Then it was this, and there's one other um, enchantment recursion spell that is very expensive mm-hmm. um, that I can't remember off the top of my head, but just it can do powerful things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, this is one I'm. When I saw it, I wasn't sure what to think of it. Ion Storm. It's it's weird. Yeah. It's just weird. I mean, it's a repeatable shock, which is nice, but I don't know. It's not one that really uh, jumps out at me as being something that... Not the most exciting, but, you know, fun yeah. effects are fun. Exactly. Oh. Um, a set of reprints that I wasn't quite expecting them put in. When I heard the name and the theme of it, I shouldn't have been surprised, but like Mana Reflection, uh, the Reflection Cycle. Mm-hmm. No, I was actually really happy to see these reprinted. We had been seeing most of these cards sit at a very high price point for so long, and Mana Reflection is certainly one of the best alongside the uh, Black um, One Wound Ref- Reflection. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just a lot of decks, especially like, well, it's Commander, right? So there's a lot of decks that really want to run this. I mean, Mana Reflection, you're just going to get more mana. You know, green decks want that. They want to play expensive things. They want to play stupid and ridiculous things. Mm-hmm. And uh, just really powerful card. Really happy to see these reprinted and really happy to see them with new artwork by oh, uh, Chris yeah. Seaman. I mean, I can get uh, I can get Seaman everywhere, you know? Okay. Uh, Grand Architect. Um, one of one part of the two-part p- infinite mana combo that C- is playing every artifact deck that Runs blue. <laughs> Whether they go infinite or not, there's all kinds of dirtly things that happen. So, mm-hmm. you know, Grand Architect is it's a good card. Uh, um, under the rares, uh, Meddling Mage. This is the second reprint in a very short time. And they're using the artwork from, I believe, Alara Reborn is when mm-hmm. this card had been uh, reprinted. Um, I can't remember the first set it was first printed in, but mm-hmm. uh, it was certainly exciting to see it then. Um it, it's just it's a it's a good card, you know. It, it sees play, sees playing like eternal formats, sees playing modern. It's a fine card. Yeah, and thanks to those these reprints, um, it's down under like two bucks Canadian. Really? Oh, it, that's it excellent. Ha- it has dropped a lot. That's excellent to hear. Um, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, uh, just a good card for a Rakdos deck. Which I mean, rewinding back to when we were cracking the first few packs, mm-hmm. I was talking about the Aristocrats deck, and this was one of the namesake cards in that deck. It was relying on uh, creatures dying, having sacrifice effects, and Falcon Wrath Aristocrat was at the uh, top end. I mean, it's an evasive body with haste. Um, you did have human creatures, so you could grow it, though it didn't. U- it wasn't usually relevant, but, you know, it's, it's a fine card. Oh, Let it that. go. Number three. Third filter land. Yeah. A uh, unique one each time. That's a very nice feeling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully uh, we round up the uh, whole cycle here. Yeah. Um, and a card that I bought for my Joyra deck, Walking Ballista. <laughs> recently uh, <laughs> recently banned in Pioneer, I believe, because it would go infinite with Heliod the Suncrowned? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that Heliod the Suncrown, it uh, gave white a chair at the CEDH table. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, good old Avison. Ah, yes. Avison, Angel of Hope. Uh, I remember when this card was first spoiled. At the time, I had a mono-white commander deck. I was mm-hmm. running Conda, Lord of Iganjo, simply because he was indestructible. <laughs> and then I saw Avison spoiled, and I realized, <coughs> move over, Conda. Oh, yeah. There's oh, a new yeah. commander in town, and oh, yeah. w- I, I wanted the builder straight up. Oh, yeah, that's uh, more than understandable. And it's like, Avacyn's probably one of the most commonly cheated in creatures in Commander. She's especially fun when you put a World Slayer on her, and World Slayer is an <laughs> equipment where uh, when an equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, uh, destroy all permanents. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun one. Mm-hmm. Um, and another card I have, very few double rares I've been noticing. I, have, mm. I think it's only been like one, if that. Come on, double masters, what's going on? But, Sculpting Steel, another Fine big card. Effect. Yeah, yeah. It's just like one of those cards that it should 
BB printed. Goes more. infinite with Shrim the Hegemon. Yes, I as remember. you know. <laughs> I, yes, I remember. I remember. And why I... Uh, uh, I remember <laughs> like it was a few weeks ago, because wait, it was. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the reasons why I do encourage people to run those one mana artifact counter spells. Because you never know... Like, it's a thing. You never know when it's coming. You from never know. <laughs> Board interaction is at a premium. Now, on to the rares. Um, another one. Sunken Ruins. Mm, another filter land. Yes. This time an ally color. Um, well, you did get the uh, you got the white green mm -hmm. one. So I believe that's so far two enemy colors uh, pairings and two ally. Color so wait, pairings. wait, wait. So I got two of the five, I believe, in the set, or four of the five in the set. I believe so. <laughs> okay, so Blink Moth Nexus. Now the one you're talking about is actually uh, Ink Moth. Yeah. Ink Moth, which was a later printing referencing this card. Mm -hmm. um, even just as a man land, I mean, it was a card that Modern Affinity decks did run because, well, it survives board sweepers. Yeah. Um, just a resilient threat that's going to have some artifacts energies. You know, fun card. Exactly. Adaptive Automaton. Commander card. Like, Commander staple card, I think. It's like, what tribe does it pump? Any and all tribes. Yes, whatever you want. Absolutely. Now, um, talking about Commander cards, uh, there's a particular Planeswalker that we haven't seen reprinted in quite a while. Mm -hmm. Any hints? Or any Any ideas? I have three words, Chris, mm -hmm. and I want you to slam it down on the table right as soon as I say it. Uh, well, I oh. am Karn. Karn liberated. Just a, a very, very good, powerful card. The first colorless planeswalker that was mm -hmm. printed in the game. Yeah, um, it was <coughs> definitely a choice they made, um, mm -hmm. and his, his ultimate is definitely a choice. I mean, there's a reason this card was a win condition in control decks, and there's a reason why, uh, you know, Tron wants to run it, because, well, you have all this colorless mana, and you can easily drop Karn very early and just start running running over. Yeah, like, um, turn three, because the Tron lands net you yep. exactly seven mana. Absolutely. Oh, Wizards, you make such great decisions with stuff like that. <laughs> but, like, it's another card I'm very happy to see reprinted because the last time we saw him reprinted was in um the mythic editions mm -hmm. which totally won I mean, a mess i mess. mean that that card has seen printings in the modern masters uh has sets. he actually he has yeah yeah a few times okay but still very pricey card oh absolutely <laughs> thoughties and i'm so happy they went with the original artwork on this one I know there are those that really enjoyed the artwork from original Theros, but you you can't you can't beat the classics. This is just gorgeous. I mean, it's one of the best forced discard spells. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that it does. A turn one Thoughtseize is great, and then if you follow up with a second one, it it is so backbreaking, oh, especially yeah. if your opponent is on a mulligan. Like you just punish them so hard. Oh yeah, that's probably what the first three turns was nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and God forbid if you pull if you draw your next two thoughtsies in that time. <laughs> when you snowball it, it it's mm -hmm. it's insane. Yeah, um, I don't see I uh, see being too busted, but nice card, Master of Ethereum. Uh, it's all play in Affinity, you know, yeah. big threat. I can definitely see it being a fully limited card. Um, maybe if they put it in Historic, I could see it doing some work there. Yeah, potentially, yeah. But I don't see it over being an overly um, powerful card. Maybe some Budget Commander. Possibly. Yeah. Yes, last pack, folks. Let's, before we get to the box toppers. Uh, now, which box topper are you hoping to see? I would be happy, even if you got a Brainstorm, one of the Tron lands, mm -hmm. um, maybe Force of Will, Mana Crypt would be good too. Any of the equipments. Mm -hmm. There's actually there's a wide range of cards because the artwork they did for them is so gorgeous, mm -hmm. and in that in that full art is it's oh, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, and Fatal Push them uh, making the art the uh, the poor gentleman's uh, view as he is falling to his death. I really like that bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Um, ah, good commander card, Reclamation Sage. If you have a deck in green, run it. Yep. There's no reason not to. Absolutely. 
Uh, and then I believe this is all five in my box. Uh, do they have five or do they have a full ten? Did they? I'm not sure if they I, have a full I ten. I feel like they did. I'm not sure. Anyways, we got the blue white filter land yeah, here. Mystic gate. Mm -hmm. Great card. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the great commander card, Hannah Ship's Navigator. Great value. Great commander. Good stuff. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. that aside, let's get into what I'm going to call possibly the money shot. Ha uh -huh. uh, And side note on the Hannah card, uh, just really good card that fine, thank you, Wizards, for finally reprinting it. Love the new artwork, too. Yes. Uh, Always great to see. I kind of prefer the Therese Nielsen artwork myself. Mm hmm. But, but it's. No, it's very nice. Art. Okay. Exactly. All right. Okay. Flip it right on camera there. Okay. So, first box topper card that we got. Oof. Look at that sword of light and shadow. Not the strongest sword, but. Gorgeous artwork. Oh, yeah. Great card. Exactly. And it gives you protection from black and white. Relevant. Exactly. And then and Expedition Map. Um, good card. Uh, not the most explosive uh, box toppers. Not quite the ones I was hoping to see. But still, very nice card. I'd say, nice I'd say overall in this box, a lot of fun cards. You know, mm -hmm. certainly some powerful ones. I don't know if you've made full money back but honestly overall um i might have made i might have i mean the con the filter lands the thought sees definitely helps certainly have to price it out but oh yeah that. oh avison for Avacyn, sure oh god yeah all right well that has been our box cracking of double masters chris thank you so much for joining us today had quite a blast on camera mm -hmm. here and i hope everybody watching enjoyed themselves we certainly enjoy uh, your viewership uh, if you do want to see more content like this, feel free to like, favorite, subscribe, and follow us over at The Lag. We are on Facebook, Instagram. We also have a Discord set up, too. Anyways, that out of the way. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Stay safe. Stay healthy, everyone. Cheers.